You are listening to Trophy Horse with your hosts, Tricky Mick, Alex, I yield to no one, Sid, and Ender Phoenix. And welcome to Trophy Wars. This is episode 628. I'm your host, Tricky Mick. Alongside with me, the man, the myth, the traitor who went to Olive Garden. It's Alex. Yeah, after not going to Olive Garden for, you know, somewhere between a decade and two decades, uh, it still tastes the same. So, yeah. It's it's I. It's I. Yeah, there's... Tricky's favorite Italian restaurant did not fail me. He brings the awesome, because he doesn't go to Olive Garden. That was quite the grumble there. I'm impressed. It's ideal to no one. It's not that I don't go. There's just really not one nearby, and I have to be in the right mood to go. But anyway, so uh, if you're not in the trophy competition that a lot of us are in, Gareth's competition, uh, I had to agree with Gareth in that I earned a couple of trophies this week and was immediately like, no! But they were common, so it was all good. I, I, I'll get into that in a second, because I actually called him, because I thought of a scheme in a way to get those points, but I was like, that, nah, it's not honest. So I, I narked on my... See? Look at you! No, 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 I narked on myself, so I couldn't do it. Look at you. You're trying to, trying to finagle yourself already. Hey, I gotta get as many points as I can. I gotta, I gotta compete with Alex this season. Well, I ain't competing, so you can. Uh, I, I mean, the only reason I would compete is because Rick picked me to win Division Two or be like, on top of Division Two. Like four people really picked you to win. Rick down. I don't want Rick yeah. down. Let Rick yeah, the, the, down, the, so. there's like three or four of us that picked you, Alex. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I have to do a double checking, but I, not that you can't do it, but I think that your points where you were at was still higher than their winner. So that's why I'm like, well, Alex, Alex has got this in the bag. Unless uh, James Jr. Come, or Rick Jr. comes storming up, which he was. So I tossed up between you two. Yeah, I, I lost on the last week to uh, Homer. <laughs> the very last week. Anyway, uh, it's the man who doesn't care about trophies or competitions or concerning trophies. It's Matt. How you doing, sir? If you're listening to the pre-show which uh, Tricky had us broadcasting before we even knew, you'd hear that my fidget spinner is a Zippo lighter. Um, I just recently got a customized one with my gamer tag, and I'm thinking I may actually go into collecting weird or unique lighters. Fire. Nothing wrong with that. Fire. Fire. I, I did start collecting a, uh, a set of Son of Anarchy Zippo lighters. It was like from the Bradford Exchange or something like that. Where you had to pay like fifty dollars every two months. I got about four months in to stop pay for it. <laughs> so I got half of them. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna like if I go out to like a a thrift shop or a uh, not what what the hell is that like a farmer's market type thing. Uh, you know, I think I'll just start looking for stuff and collecting. All right. Speaking of collecting, we like to collect trophies over here. I am level. Yeah. 950 total trophies of 31,007 with 865 Platinums. Alex? I have been a lot better about this, but not today. Going back to my old ways. How long does it take to open? Uh, I am level 505, total trophy count of 9,876, and a Platinum count of 171 in 170 games, bearing down on 172. Yield? I am currently holding steady at level 512 with a trophy count of 10264. Like I said, I earned a whopping two trophies this week. Two more than I intended. <clears throat> they were commons, so it was good. And a plat count of 190. Not quite sure what my next one will be. It might be Warhammer. I'm going to start boosting the multiplayer next week. Matt, before I ask you your trophies, I like what you did with the Mortal Kombat topic. I saw that. <laughs> Matt, your trophy, sir. Uh, no chain, still level 220, still 1,311 
uh, trophies, zero plats, but the last achievement I got on Steam was in MechWarrior 5, complete five missions with your lance at least 50 tons under max tonnage in a campaign or career. It's very specific. I like it. It is very specific. And Sid is level 890, total trophies of 27,029 with 844 platinums. He's 21, 11 behind me. Maybe to you. What do you mean to me? But he's maybe one maybe in you. our hearts. Not in our hearts. Not in my head. I, I, I'm never going to get love from you guys, am I? Especially no, you sometimes. two. Matt, Matt at no, least... Sid. Matt, Matt's at least fair. Like, he'll call me out, but like when I'm, when I'm doing good, he, call, he says good things. You two are just like, fuck you. No, I mean, it's well, Sid. How are we gonna, if, we're not going to pick you over Sid. If, if you do something worthwhile that deserves, hey... <laughs> You did a great job. You'll get it from me. I, I got I got two trophies in Hell Divers. Which two did you get? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Well, I, then I, I I can't give you an attaboy. I, I know there's I know one of them was a uh, complete uh, do a mission without extracting. Okay. All right. Man, I don't hey man, that, that Vanquish Platinum's still out there, tricky. If you want a real pat on the back. Yeah, yeah, you get that. Well, the deal was that I get that or the uh, Bioshock Infinite Platinum. You guys was permanently stopped talking shit about me. Well, I don't know about you guys. I, I don't know if I agreed to that. You did. I, it's on the show. I don't and think I, it was no, permanently, but permanently. we had to give you your props. No, it was permanently. You would stop giving me well, shit we, about my no, splam. We had to make fun of you for playing shitty games. We had to stop making fun of you for playing shitty games. That's what it was. Right. You had to stop giving me shit about spam games. Yeah, but that's not giving you shit for everything. Well, I meant about trophy wise. Anyway, yeah. uh, so the way uh, I knocked on myself to Gareth was, I <clears throat> I was earning trophy. I was at work and I was playing my PlayStation, of course. <clears throat> and as everyone does at work, and, yes, I, I have I have one in my locker. And I and I popped about like four or five trophies, and I and I got home. And I was like, oh crap! I should have popped those because you know the competition starts soon. Then I realized, hey, I can just keep that PlayStation offline until afterwards he gets the base and then sync it, and then those trophies would count. No, because they'd be dated for the day you popped them, not for the day you synced them. Well, I was willing to take the risk on him not looking at the dates. No, he's looking at the dates. Anyway, so I, I called him. I told him what to do. Oh, and he, he, said, he said it really doesn't matter because it's only like five anyway. And they were probably all commons too. So anyway, uh, that's what it is. So let's get into what we're playing. Guild, we'll start with you, sir. Ah, uh, so let's see here. Come on, phone. Wake up. Uh, I've been playing some Rocket League. I played some Hell Divers. I played some Monster Hunter World. I played. I have I played anything else? What was the last monster you killed, Guild? I can't think of its name. I killed him on my own, which I was kind of proud of. It was uh, it's kind of a dark bluish monster. looked like a Tyrannosaurus, but it had a bunch of bones all over it and would, like, roll forward like a giant wheel when it would get mad. Like an armadillo? Kind of like an armadillo, yeah. So, so you said dark bluish, not yellow. Yeah, dark bluish, not yellow. Okay, that was a Radabon with bones so. all over and you smashed the bones. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Yep. As you as you hit it, it bones fall off its face. So, but I, I did that. My brother and his buddy was off doing another mission, and I was like, "Well, all right, I'll, I'll try and do this on my own." And I was able to do it on my own. So I was kind of proud of myself. I was like, "Oh, hey, I, I I finally killed a big monster on my own, and and I didn't die, but I fainted, but once I think. But anyway, um, I also got back into World of Warship Legends. Uh, they announced next week that the uh, the campaign has a ship in it that when the game was originally launched, I'm like, there are two ships that I will spend money for if they are not in the game. And this is the second ship that I want. So I will kind of was kind of getting myself kind of refamiliar with the game and seeing how much I had, you know, if I'd lost my touch. And then found out that they had had a free, a bunch of free D-Day missions that had been going on since like end of May, first of June. And so I've been kind of playing a little bit more to try to grab some of that freebie stuff. 
So, but uh, that, that's it, I think. All right, Alex. I played some Hell Divers as well this week. Uh, not a lot of rounds, but I got some games in just to get back in the swing of things. And I've been spending most of my time since I got the Platinum Trophy in Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus in another PS2 gym, which popped up to me randomly and unexpectedly on the premium classes collection, uh, Ghost Hunter, um, a third-person shooter horror game, which it's kind of an obscure one. Most people probably never played it. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen this game out in the wild, even like a resale shop or anything like that. I've just never seen it. I actually never expected it to see it again anywhere. Um, lo and behold, it's actually made by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe and Sony, uh, the Cambridge studio. So it's actually a Sony owned game, which explains why it now is not only on the service, but also has a platinum trophy to its name. Um, so, I mean, mostly kind of your milestone trophies, like beat this boss, you know, do this thing in the chapter. Most of them are story related. There are some that you can miss, but for the most part, it's just kind of like a check the boxes kind of thing as you go through the game, which honestly I'm fine with because like I said, this game, Never thought I would see it again, and here it is on PlayStation Plus Premium, and just to be able to earn trophies for the game, no matter what they are, I'm, I'm kind of happy about that, so good to see it out there. Um, you know, for me, the game, like, I would get far more out of replaying this game in, you know, this year than, like, say, anyone who's new to it would. I think if I recommended this game to people and they tried to play it, they'd be like, man, what, what, is, what is this? Kind of like how Tricky felt about Alan Wake Remastered when he, when he played that a couple of years ago, just... You don't have the same um, when you have a like uh, when you grew up playing a game. You're obviously going to get more out of replaying it than somebody who's brand new to it in 2024. So the game hasn't aged well. But what I do like about it is there are a lot of memorable moments in the game that I because like I was playing through it and I hadn't watched any videos about it. I hadn't played it in like 14 plus years or something. I, I'll have to look it up and see how long it's been since I played it. But I can remember certain moments like okay, this is about to happen. I knew exactly. I could call it out. I can remember this game and the moments from this game much better than I could for something like The Order 1886. While The Order 1886, I think, is a better overall game with better mechanics, this game has far more memorable moments. And like I said, it's PS2 era, so hasn't aged well, but when something you know comes from that era, you kind of have to expect that. You really can't compare it to things that are developed today because we just had such better technology and game you know, iteration and, and uh, game developers learning to make games better and you know make controls better and snappier and everything, so... I'm, enjoy I'm still enjoying playing the game. If you've never played it, basically, um, you let a bunch of ghosts out of a array, and you have to basically collect them all again um, and save your partner. Uh, you're a policeman, I think, in is it Detroit. I can't remember. It, you're a policeman, I think, in Detroit. Um, but basically, you are used. You are collecting these ghosts, including big boss ghosts, at the end of certain realms. So um, what you do is you have this thing called a grenade. It's basically a little ghost trapper that you can either throw in a ghost and then shoot it, and once a certain amount of damage is done, the grenade will catch the ghost, or you can just shoot the ghost and then throw the grenade once they're weak enough, and it'll catch them. Uh, so kind of very Ghostbusters-y, but not quite the same thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's there's some really memorable bosses, um, and even the go though the game, like I'm playing through, it's like man, this is, I, I I'm still I'm still having fun with it because I do have a history with the game. But you know, anyone who's new to this now would uh, would probably be like, man, what this game is ain't too great. Uh, but again game preservation being what it is i would say if you have playstation plus premium give ghost hunter a try um it's mostly gold and silver trophies uh so there is that and you know there are memorable moments in the game so even if you don't like it um you may get something out of it and i'm just i'm just glad that people do have the opportunity to play this game because like i said i i bought it on the ps2 i had the disc and i've gotten rid of all my ps2 discs but just going through cons and resale markets and, and convention stuff and, and you know in mom and pop shops I've never seen this game on the shelf since I bought it. So to see it on a, on a service like this is really nice. So I'm, I'm glad it's at least there. And I, I hope to see uh, if we can get Dark Watch on there one day uh, from Capcom. That would be spectacular. But, yeah, that's what I've been playing. All right. Matt? Well, the great thing about this week is Steam sales started. So that means I have more games than I'm adding to my backlog. But I also touched a couple of them in the meantime. But uh, Burnout Paradise, The Ultimate Box. Uh, let's see, what else? More Origami 2. Again, Ultimate Chicken Horse. Got back into Doom Eternal because I bought the expansions for 12 bucks. More Elden Ring DLC. Making a little progress there. Beat some bosses. Monster Hunter Stories. 
And then finally, MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, because I bought even more DLC for that, which is giving me more options as I'm spanning the galaxy, strengthening my Mercenary core. All right. And I have been playing Division 2, uh, of course. Uh, little Helldivers, a little Sly Cooper on the PS4 and the PS5. I was hoping you would keep playing a little bit. Um, actually, I was playing it right before... Uh, we started recording and popped another trophy. Um, do, you, do you like Sly Cooper? I love Sly Cooper. Had you played it before, or is this your first time? No, nah, I got the plats on the PS3 version. Okay. Uh, actually, no. I take that. I, I got it on the first or second game. I don't think I ever got the, the platinum in the third game on the PS3. What about the fourth game? No, never did. Well, hey, you know what? If they keep bringing games to the, the uh, PlayStation Plus Premium service... Could get a whole new trophy list for all of them. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, we're gonna get into those uh, those versions a little later in the show. Cause uh, I did a little experiment after reading the article, and boy oh boy, uh, I feel like you played other things. I said I said Division Two. Division. Um, I said Sly Cooper. Uh, what else have I played? I don't know. Every time I turn my four on, all I ever see is Division Two. <clears throat> I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, oh, five dates. Um, it's five one dates. Of those, never, never it's, heard of it. it. It can be considered a spam game, um, but it takes. In reality, it takes you five hours to get it. Um, it's one of those. It's like a Dayton show type game. Oh, okay. Um, you got to go through like. You're in the pandemic, and you're having virtual dates with people, and you have to make choices. Um, so, Do your choices matter? Yes, the choices matter. It depends on whether or not you get the date or not. Gotcha. And it's, so sometimes, sometimes when it says your choices matter, when you get to the end of the game, you're like, you know, I don't think the choices really mattered. Uh, and the cool thing about this is, is it, there's no... Uh, there's no animation with it. It's all real people. Like, it's it's live videos. So, it's no animation to it at all. So, uh, I don't know what the hell that noise was, but we're going to move on. All that right. That certainly explains the title, Five Dates. Oh, Jesus Christ. We can't have a good show. Joe's down here. It's an awesome show now that Joe's here, but also in chat, Roboto Love... Talks about Ghost Hunter is about sixty bucks complete in box. Bringing hmm. back conversation from a couple minutes ago. Is that what CIB okay. is complete in box? Where, where was he? Uh, where did he find that? Is it on eBay? I mean, I'm sure you could find it on R- eBay. Roboto can find almost anything out there. I mean, I'm sure if I really wanted it, people were selling it on eBay. But just I, in my travails, I you know I I don't go to eBay all that much. So just in what I had seen, but it's good to know it's out there and. See. I would think it'd be. I would think it would be more than sixty bucks because I would think that it wouldn't be too heavily printed. But hey, sixty bucks for complete—that's pretty nice. Uh, and not only can he find everything, he's also doing a fantastic job making our thumbnails on the show. So thank you, Roberto. Uh, Roboto. Wow, Roboto. You, you thank him and then I you can't... say the complete wrong name. Him. You know what? I, I I'm always going to do that probably because you know I have a friend, Roberto. He says he's blushing. We're aware. He's my friend, too, and I don't mess with the names. Okay, listen. I it PlayStation Plus games for July 2024 yeah. have been announced, uh, coming from the PlayStation blog and written by Adam Michelle. Uh, I'm just going to read what Matt wrote here. Is, you want guns? Because this July, you're getting billions of guns when Borderlands 3 comes to the PlayStation Plus. Along this... Uh, this, along with other follow games, will be made available come July 2nd. NHL 24, which I'm excited for. Among Us, which I think would be a good party game for all of us. Um, and an additional pack containing items for Genshin Impact. That game's still going. I don't know why. No, people like it. Not not, not you, but some people like it. <sighs> like every, it, That's part of the, the, the whole Yo-Yo, Ho-Yo universe or something like that. Ho-Yo-verse. Me, me. Huh? Tricky, tricky. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, every time they they like they're doing press conferences now. There's something called the Hoyo Universe or something like that. 
Oh, yo, 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 Mojo. I, I know you guys Mo, see Mojo, it. Mojo, Jojo. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. It, Matt it's said, Matt the, said the, it. makers, the makers of Genshin Impact, they, they do a bunch of stuff. But the reason why it's still so popular is because people still pump a ton of money into it through microtransactions and micro purchases. So, therefore, they're going to continue making the game. Yeah, it's Hoyo Reverse. Anyway. Anyway. All right. So, uh, obviously, I'm excited for NHL 24. Yield, are you excited for Borderlands 3? Or have you beaten that already? No. Not excited for it. I already have it. Okay. Anything else you're excited for? No. It, 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 it's another ho hum month for me. Yeah, you're just gonna play it Among Us. I thought that'd be a good party game for no. us. No, no, I didn't care about it when it was new and ever. It was the rave for a couple of months. No. Okay. What about you, Alex? So, I mean, if I'm going to play NHL, I want it to be arcade style, you know, NHL hits. So, um, I'm not, I don't really want to play simulation hockey. Like, I'll admit, like, watching watching a game with Tricky is not so bad. I mean, hockey can be exciting, but I just, I don't really want to play a game, a hockey game, simulation style. And I don't really like to play a lot of simulation style sports anyway. So, arcade's more my style. Um, Borderlands 3, I had the platinum in Borderlands, and I really enjoyed uh, Tales from Borderlands. I had the platinum trophy in that as well. So, I have dabbled in the Borderlands universe, and if you look at it, you probably figured it'd be something I would like. Uh, but I just, I don't know. After Borderlands, I never really felt the need to go to Borderlands 2, and never felt the need to buy Borderlands 3. So I, I just, I can't even explain it. I just, after the first game, I was kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fine. I'm kind of done with this. Um, see, see that that's how I feel with The Last of Us, Alex, and people harp on me for that. I, I just don't. I just can't understand why you're not interested in trying to play the second one. I just, just Alex's explanation right there for Borderlands. I played it, and I was like, okay. Fair enough. And then Among Us, never any interest in that. So I'm probably not going to be playing much this month, but then again, I've been talking about trying to play Tunic for months now, and all of a sudden Sly Cooper and Ghost Hunter pop up on PlayStation Plus collections. I'm like, well, i got to play these and get these Platinums. So maybe... uh, Maybe it's a Tunic month? Yeah, maybe having a month where I'm not downloading anything uh, is... Is good because it'll allow me to play something else that I've been meaning to play. All right, Matt. Uh, to me, simulation hockey peaked with NHL '97. I have not played a single hockey game since then. Uh, I already played and beaten Borderlands Three on the PC. Among Us, I've had forever. That was the big COVID game. So, yeah. No, even if I had it, yeah, you know, if I had PlayStation Plus, I'd probably dabble in NHL a little bit just to play a good hockey game, but yeah. Yeah. And and nobody's apparently nobody's interested in getting the uh additional pack for Genshin Impact. Uh, I I've never even never looked played. at Genshin Impact. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh just, I know it's I know it's a free game because my, my niece plays it, but I nah. It it's got a solid base. It's just there's too much gotcha elements in it and you're always trying to get the four or five star character pull and building your team. I I tried it on my phone. Every time I went to load up the game, it would be five minutes of updating. I was like, all right, I, if I can't just load into it, I'm not interested in playing this. Makes right. sense. Uh, checking it back with the chat. I don't know what Joe said because he's been banned for one second, so erased everything he said. I don't know what he said. He said, what a save. What a I can save. see it. It save. says, you know what sucks, Tricky? It rhymes with lame jurors. Would it be Rangers? Ah, uh, moving on. Certainly not, re- certainly not the Rescue Rangers. Motor Cup at one. Data hey, Miner have has. We, have we congratulated the Florida Panthers on their Stanley Cup trophy win, beating the the Oilers? Did we do that yet? No, I don't think we have. Heck of a series. They did go seven games. Yeah, they they almost lost it. They went up three zero and they almost lost. Well, listen, they they got comfortable thinking they had a three zero lead and. They could just, you know, coast to it. And uh, Connor, Connor McDavid taught, taught them otherwise. Well, yeah, I mean, you would tend to get a little complacent. You would tend to be a little comfortable. But we saw what the Belt and Boston Celtics did to uh, the Mavericks. And when you have 3-0, you may give up a game or two, but you put them away when you can. Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm not going to take anything from the Panthers. I'm congratulations, congratulations on the win. But... The goal that they won on the the goal the game winning goal, that was a very soft goal. 
Like they got lucky to get that goal. It goes in. It, it, it did go in. Do you, do you, so speaking of all that, all the shenanigans, I forgot who won it. But did you see that the uh, Oilers player who won the Conn Smythe Trophy, Connor McDavid, didn't didn't come out to receive it? Yeah, kind of. Uh, this is the second time in uh, Stanley Cup final history that. A non-goalie won the Conn Smythe, which, if anybody doesn't know, the Conn Smythe is for the MVP of the playoffs, um, was not on the winning team. So, Connor McDavid, who lost the Stanley Cup, won the MVP for the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, he is kind of known to be the best, or considered the best player in the NHL, correct? Definitely one of the top five, yes. Um, But, yeah, second time in history, uh, a losing team player won the MVP. That was an, a non-goalie, because uh, there's been goalies that on the losing team that won. <coughs> uh, okay, next topic comes from IGN, written by Wesley Yinpool. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1, Data Miner, has unearthed what looks like the next six DLC characters. i um, just going to give you the names, and you guys tell me if any of these interested you, even though I know you guys don't play Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, Cyrax, Sector, Noob Cybot, Ghost-Faced, Conan the Barbarian, and the T-1000. I mean, I'm pretty sure all these characters, except for maybe... Well, I mean, Conan. I don't know if Conan or Ghostface has ever been in the series before, but first of all, why are you putting Ghostface in there? I mean, Ghostface has typically been played by high school kids, and you're going to throw them in there against, like, Sector, Cyrax, and all these Mortal Kombat characters from Netherrealm, or from the, the you know, well, Outworld? They like, did ridiculous. They did add Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade's daughter in the game, and also Jax's daughter. Okay, but they're the daughters of former Mortal Kombat combatants. They're not just some random goof in a mask with a knife. Like, it's ridiculous. It's like putting Shaggy, Norval Rogers, in multiverses and have them fighting some monstrous creature. It just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. Like, it's, it's stupid to have Ghostface in Mortal Kombat. It's stupid. He doesn't have any sort of, like, mystical powers or superpowers, whereas the rest of them have, like, some level of of special abilities. He, he's just a dude with a knife. Like, I... I mean, okay. it's, a, it's a cool knife. No, it's really not. That's, it's, no, that, I mean, look, I'll, I'll buy into Conan the Barbarian and the T-1000, but but the T-1000 was in previous Mortal Kombat games, but... Yeah, I mean... Was it? I thought it was the T-800. I don't know. It was one of them Terminators. T- hold on, hold on, hold on. Is the Is the liquid metal Terminator, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, in the uh, Robert Patrick one? Yes. The T2 one? Okay. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the game as the Terminator. Yeah, in the previous Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Right. When but this is the T800. This is the T1000, which I believe is Robert Patrick's character. Yes, correct. So yeah, it's, okay. it's, I think the, the article went to go on to say it's interesting that you're going to have an Arnold based character, Conan, fighting Robert Patrick, despite Arnold being the T800 prior. To, to his credit. Uh, Robert Patrick was the Terminator in the be- what is considered by many to be the best uh, Terminator movie. Well, T2. agreed. Yeah, and oh, maybe, and yeah, maybe I, if, I would if, agree. And not just that, but the best action movie of the '90s, potentially. I don't think I've ever seen any of the Terminators. <gasps> I mean, after you know, a certain I, point, I'm not going to hold him accountable for that. It's not they were good, but they weren't like. You saw what happened to three, four Genesis, um, whatever other <laughs> Terminator one. Like, oh, we're gonna make it the Terminator three, the Terminatrix, because that's a playoff of Dominatrix, and it's a female Terminator. So therefore, no, guys, stop. You were good at two. Uh, it, it, it should have ended at two. There's right. too much money to be made otherwise. Yield your thoughts on the characters. I I don't have any because I don't play Mortal Kombat. I mean, do you have? Do you think that Ghostface, Conan, or the C one thousand fit into a Mortal Kombat verse? No, but they want that DLC money, so ten four. Uh, moving on to our next topic: Epic Mickey rebrushed has a release date. Uh, coming from IGN, written by Ryan Dinsdale. Disney's Epic Mickey Rebrush launches on the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC on September 24th of this year. The game will carry a $60 price tag, but will also have a $200 collector's edition. Uh, Matt wrote editor's note, and if you order the collector's edition, you're part of the problem. Uh, 
Those who pre-order either version will get three skins and 24 hours early access, although the early access will not be available to PC players. The collector's edition comes with a 28-centimeter Mickey Mouse statue, an Oswald the Lucky Rabbit keychain, a vintage Mickey Mouse t- tin sign, six postcards, a steel book, a digital costume pack, and the game itself. However, the article Nord THQ Nordic indicates whether this is a physical or digital copy of the game. We'll go to Yield first. Uh, I totally did forgot about this game and haven't really seen much of it, so... I don't really know what to say until I see a trailer or some gameplay of it. Did I mean, you play did you play the original game? No. I think I dabbled in it. I don't think I really got into it though. And and I have to see like the statue and the stuff that you're getting to see if two hundred dollars would be worth it. That seems a little steep. That, that. 28, 28 centimeter statue I'm thinking isn't very big so that that, that seems steep especially since they didn't tell you you're going to get a physical game I, I hate the whole you get a steel bookcase and you don't get a physical game that's just it, it, it boggles my mind but yeah uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up to see if uh, it does say anything on the actual I, page. That was the problem. I tried searching on THQ Nordic, which it, it lists everything that's in there. It just doesn't say whether it's digital no or pictures. physical. The, oh, the, um, it, 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 the picture it had, it, it, it's not like it showed the steel book. It's not like it showed a disc anywhere, which I wasn't expecting it to. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to see if Mordecai. I can... Cup. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to save the picture so I can send it to yield, but I don't know if this is going to work. Alex, how about you? What's your what's your thoughts well, on this well, entire thing? We all know damn well that I'm not spending any money on that collector's edition because I save my money for 3D printed Pokemon at Ren- Renaissance fairs. That's where I spend my money. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Hey, you know what? Crystal Onyx is a great investment. Uh, but I'm, you know, I played this game. Was this the, the original game? Because there were two of them. Was the original game exclusive to the Wii? Because I played it on the Nintendo console, I remember. It was um, definitely released on the Wii, because that was part of it. With the brush, the Wii Wiimote, you could do all weird, yeah. fun stuff. I don't recall it coming anywhere else, but I think 2 was released multi-system. Yeah, well, because that was the... That was the end of, of Junction Point, uh, or Warren Spector, and, and the whole Disney... Uh, arm of video games was kind of epic Mickey. And and that was kind of the turning point where they kind of decided that they were going to shut all that down, you know, black rock studio and all that. Um, so I played the first game. It was good. I had my gripes, but I would like to play it again to give it a second look just to, you know, just a new, a new code of, uh, a, a new set of eyes. Like, you know, having played it a decade or more early, you know, earlier, I just kind of want to, you know, see see if um if my opinions on it have changed you know if they i would still have the same issues as i had before but uh but yeah i mean it was, it was a good game um i mean i think they did a good a good job with it. it just didn't i guess it wasn't successful enough and you know even with the second game then bringing it to multiple consoles it just it just wasn't enough so uh but yeah i i might actually pick this game up just to play it again because even though i played it once before i kind of just kind of want to see uh one of those games that you want to go back and play to see if you if you think the same thing years later when you're older and supposedly wiser. Yo, I did send a picture in Skype. Uh, it's the best picture I could yeah, find. Yeah, I, I had found it about the time you sent it. It's not a bad-looking statue, but $200? <laughs> you're thinking, no, I don't love Mickey that much. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Do all that. Matt, did you give your opinion on this or no? I feel- I didn't yes. play the original, and I have no intention on playing this one. I, I was never big into Mickey-based games. Okay. Not even for the SNES or the Genesis? I, Pass of Illusion I may or have played one Mickey game back then, but I, can't, I can barely remember if I did. I was more Bugs Bunny in The Lost Castle or The Crazy Castle, whatever it was, and hating what that about, game. What about Tiny Toons? Tiny Toons Adventures on I the I played the shit out of Tiny Toons. Yeah. Yeah, we, you get past that pirate guy. I believe so. It's we big, all got past that mad. That, I, I, it's been a long time since I played it. We all got past that mad scientist on the skateboard, but what we really want to yes. know is if you got past that 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 swashbuckler. 
All right. Uh, the next topic we have, I put in here for Matt because he is uh, the Elden Ring master over here. Elden Ring DLC difficulty has officially been lowered after a re recent outrage. This is this is coming for Tech for Gamers from uh, Bawal Zeri. After some public outcry, the devs from the devs at From Software have made some changes to the newly released Elden Ring DLC. In the expansion, players must collect items called Skadoo Tree. There you go. I, I was trying to figure out how. Uh, fragments that increase your damage dealt and mitigate damage taken. From Salt has scaled the collection of these items to benefit the players more significantly for the first half of the items you collect. It said this will help you make it will help make the game easier. But now, FromSoft is fielding complaints from players who enjoyed the difficult nature of the DLC. And then Matt wrote a note, this doesn't make the game easier. Matt, so, let, so, okay, I'm sorry. Can you I go. ask a question? So, Matt, let me ask. So, w with them adding these fragments to increase your damage and whatnot, so does that change the overall gameplay of what the original game was? So, no. And here's what FromSoft did for this DLC. You have your character and you level them just like you've done in any of the in the base game and DLC. In the DLC, they introduce these things. They're called Skadoo Tree Fragments and then uh, Revered Ashes. So Skadoo Tree Fragments help you, the player. Revered Ashes help your summons. And they are only valid, the buff is only active when you are in this DLC area. Uh, and I'm sorry, you'll, going back to your question, what, remind me. Does it help so, with the main so game? I, I wanted to know, like, did it change the gameplay? Yeah. Uh, so, no. It doesn't change the gameplay. It just simply changes the amount of damage you do and the amount of damage you can take and the amount of damage your summons can do and take in this DLC area. So it has no bearing on the base game map. So there's two areas, base game, DLC. These things only help in the DLC area. What they did, there's, I don't know the exact number, let's say there's 20 fragments in the entire DLC. Before the patch, they made it that all of these fragments buffed you by X percent. Let's just say 5%, okay? What this patch does is it now increases the buffs you get for those first 10 fragments. Again, just using a random number. And then it it scales it back on the final, on the back half of the fragments. So therefore, it's giving players a little bit better of a chance at surviving the early parts of the DLC because they're getting a bigger buff. But overall, it's the same buff that was before patch, just more heavily favored on the front end. Are, are you guys following me? Yeah, I get you. So, is is the DLC that much harder th than the base game? Yes. Um, you know, I, I, when I started playing it, random mobs were two-shotting me. The the very first... Uh, uh, it, it's called a, the Black Jail Goth. Or no, Black Jail Knight. It, it's just a random world boss you can find was one-shotting me. So I got a couple different fragments, leveled up a couple different times, and now, you know, I have to be careful. I, I almost beat them, but I've also beaten other bosses. So it, it's difficult, but it's about what you expect going into a base level FromSoft game. It's just, it's DLC. People thought that they can go in there over-leveled and just simply own everything, and that's not what FromSoft wanted you to experience. They wanted you to experience the challenge again. Because this is my new game plus of the game, and... I was destroying anything and everything in the base game. I come into the DLC and I'm now challenged again, and I'm having a blast being challenged. Gotcha. I, I was wondering because you know if it was tougher, was it a warranted complaint or was it just you know I, as Donnie always said, just a bunch of crybaby gamers going, "Oh, this is too hard." 
there's crybaby gamers on both sides. You got the crybaby gamers saying, this is too hard. And then now you have the crybaby gamers being like, this isn't well, hard enough. You, now you're making it too easy. Like, fuck off, Now, now you've nerfed it. You've nerfed it too much. It's not a challenge. Yeah. Well, it, it, by the time that the people complaining that it's been nerfed are, are taking effect of this, it's, are, it's not affecting them at all. <laughs> like, you've already gotten past that hurdle of, of half of the fragments. So... Fuck off. Fuck off. All right, Alex, your opinions? Um, I, I have no opinions. I mean, I will defer to Matt on this. I had heard um, a friend of mine who has beaten the DLC, beaten the, the last boss um, of it, um, who he and his girlfriend were just putting their heads down and just go, 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 go. They played a ton of that game since it's released, um, or a ton of the DLC since it's released. Uh, but basically, he was saying a lot of people in the community – with the update are going to try to beat the game without the update because they want the kind of the little pat on the back for themselves that they could beat it without the, the patch. Um, and I did see where, and I think I originally shared this article uh, when I saw it online because I had seen that people were complaining about the difficulty and how hard it was. And, um, and you know, what Matt said is like, you got people who were leveled up or like my, one of my friends, he had leveled up one weapon only like a giant great sword, which was slow as hell. And he had to kind of getting into DLC. He had to kind of think, rethink things because when he was using that sword, uh, he was too slow. He was getting his ass kicked. So, um, it seems like the DLC, um, yeah, I'm sure it helped to play a ton of Elden ring, but if you get over leveled in the base game and it's easy, you know, it becomes much easier going in and expecting that in the DLC, like you were just completely caught off guard because they made it just harder. Even regardless of how much you had played Elden Ring, they wanted you to do certain things and they, they wanted to challenge you again. They just, they weren't throwing this out there. They didn't take a year, year and a half, however long it was to make this DLC to have everyone just breeze through it. So uh, I'll just jump in right there real quick, because the other thing you can do in the game is you level your weapons. You talk about your friend that he leveled this one weapon, and that was the weapon he was using. That's because they the game uses things called smithing stones and somber smithing stones, depending on the type of weapon you have. And they were plentiful in the base game, but not free-flowing, because they wanted you to, to experiment. In this DLC, I'm picking up a smithing stone every other enemy that I kill. So they want you to be able to, to go in and say, all right, we're introducing new weapons. We're introducing new weapon types. We want you to experiment with some of these and get used to uh, possibly using different weapons than you did in the base game. So they're, they're giving people the things they need to do to succeed. It's just a bunch of people were whining because they were getting two shot by mobs, not realizing, oh, it's a new base level experience. And from what I'd seen, Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this is kind of the only DLC they're going to have for Elden Ring. I think they've said that this is it. So, obviously, if that's the case, you don't want people finishing this in two days. You want them to have to take their time on it because this is all the new Elden Ring you're going to get. Unless, for some, reason, right. unless for some reason they decide to go and make a sequel. No, but here's the thing. It's a $40 DLC, and... It massively expands the game. This is this is bigger th than some other games DLC. Like this is a it, people half jokingly call us Elden Ring two because really that's kind of what it is. It's it's uh, a massive massive expansion. All right, sorry, I was uh, prepping for one of our reader questions. Next topic we have. Is multiple Assassin's Creed remakes are in the works, according to the Ubisoft CEO. This is coming from Andy Chalk over at PC Gamer. Uh, editor's note: There's two of them. Uh, first one: Why in the beep, 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 do we ha need Assassin's Creed remakes? It's not like we don't get a new beep, 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 Assassin's Creed game every year. Ubisoft CEO Yves Goumont says the publisher is looking to release AC games more regularly in the future and that remakes of older games will be among them. Ubisoft, saw, Ubisoft <laughs> wants players to be excited about the remakes and the ability to go back and play them with modernization in tow. Another editor's note, who in the beep wants to play Assassin's Creed uh, 2007? I thought people lambasted because it was too repetitive and boring. What the bleep, Ubisoft? 
hey, this is the same company that's out there touting for the Switch, the 20th anniversary of Beyond Good and Evil, which I'm sure people will enjoy, but it's going to be the Beyond Good and Evil 40th anniversary before we even get Beyond Good and Evil 2. They're out here touting the 20th anniversary of the game that people want a fucking sequel to that they will not give us. That's Ubisoft. Robot. And, 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 and that we showed a kick-ass trailer for and then has gone dark since. Roboto uh, in the chat says, what the hell was that? No cussing on the trophy horse? No, I'm just reading word for word what the editor's note was. What the hell does that mean? Because I, I beat I, myself. I, he wanted to know why I, I wasn't I, cursing. I, 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 I get it. I was, oh, I'm you sorry. Know, sorry. <laughs> I understand that people would like to probably play Black Flag again. People really like that game. Um, but it's still readily available. You can probably go on your PS5 and buy Black Flag at this point, can't you? Uh, yes. Why are they putting so many resources into fucking Assassin's Creed? I don't get it. Can I I just... You already have studios dedicated to making new Assassin's Creed games. Why do we have to have just... Why does Ubisoft have to be the Assassin's Creed company? It feels like 50% of what they are putting now is going to be Assassin's Creed. Can I just say this... That's just a guess. I'm just throwing that out there, but it feels like... What half of what they're doing is just Assassin's Creed. Can I just say this feeds into my initial thought of what the Animus Hub was going to be? Because if they remake these games, it's very easy for them to patch it into the An- Animus Hub. Well, enjoy the Animus Hub trick because I won't be a part of that nonsense. Ditto. <sighs> well, Yield, I mean, you just said ditto, but do you have any thoughts you want to share? All right, just... So... I have picked up some of the remakes of Assassin's Creed because they have they didn't have the multiplayer trophies, so I'm like, oh, I could I don't have to boost it. I can just get, I can straight out get the platinum and not have to worry about trying to boost games that nobody plays. I played Black Flag. That was the only Assassin's Creed game I played. Absolutely loved it. Um, I've got a long way to go through to catch up on Assassin's Creed games, but I just I I don't see a point. Unless you're completely remaking it, it some of those games probably don't age well. And like Alex said, you're already so heavily invested in Assassin's Creed. Give us something else beyond good and evil 2, maybe, that you pimped out like five years ago. That might be a slight exaggeration. It may have only been three. But you get what I'm saying. I'm more excited for that that I ain't heard nothing about in three years than I am about you remaking Assassin's Creed games. Well, they they are making the the crew games. They are making which they, yeah, they, yeah, which yeah have, like anybody which wants pissed to, everybody off. Yeah, who wants to invest in those? Uh they did just release Avatar. They are coming out with Star Wars Outlaws. They are working on Division 3. Which, which, which Star Wars Outlaws, although, you know, I'll be getting it, I'm still cautious about it. It's Ubisoft. This, this is the least surprising, most Ubisoft thing to do. I mean, really. Like, no, you're double, right. triple Absolutely. down on, on Assassin's Creed, come out with a bunch of remakes and remasters. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not surprised by this. I'm definitely not going to feed into it and support it. But, hey, maybe bring back Rayman. People love Rayman. Maybe make a new Rayman game. <gasps> How dare you suggest bring do something new, Alex? Uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm... I know it sounds like I'm defending Ubisoft here, but I'm just saying that kind of. there there are other games that do inside Assassin's Creed. But I agree with you guys on the fact that they are going Assassin's Creed heavy. And let's be real, I mean, part of this is probably because I mean they may, they may have decided to do this before, but I mean Skull and Bones, you call it a a, a four A game, uh, probably because of how much it costs to make that game over time. And if they're not going to see the return on it, they're going to be even more sequel heavy. And hey, let's do more remakes and remasters of the game that sold well for us because this game that we invested a ton of money in and a ton of time in, well, it may not have been the financial success we wanted to, regardless of whether it's fun or not. So I'm sure something like that, if you know Skull and Bones does not succeed financially, probably influences their other decisions elsewhere on what to make and how much of their upcoming games lineup is remasters of Assassin's Creed or remakes of Assassin's Creed. And I agree with what you're saying. And, and that's sad because Skull, Skull and Bones or Ubisoft has nobody to blame for Skull and Bones but themselves. All right, so let me ask you guys a question, and I'll start with Matt on an answer. Um, all right, could, 
I, I'm trying to figure out how I want to phrase this. You guys are going about saying about how Ubisoft's going Assassin's Creed heavy, but yet we get another Just Dance every year, and that's the money maker for them as well. I mean, are you going to criticize them for making Just Dance every year? Absolutely. Well, they're updated with different songs, but also we're talking about Assassin's Creed year after year. I mean, may, maybe not what they had Mirage last year. Are we getting an Assassin's Creed this year? I believe we're getting Shadows this year, but Mirage was two years ago, wasn't it? No, it was last year. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I think it sure. was November. But we're talking about new releases on top of oh. remasters and remakes. We're not they're not remaking the JS Dance games. All right, hold on. So they're still uh, full steam ahead with this Nexus thing or this uh this Animus Hub and putting out new games and going back and remaking some of the old games and re-releasing them. All right. To to be fair, I, I did pose the question to Matt first and you guys jumped Sorry, in. Matt. <laughs> Matt, your thoughts. Fuck Ubisoft. That's it? <laughs> no, I, I, like, I tried. I have tried almost every single Assassin's Creed game, and I just fall off of it. You know, the first one, like, I, I put in the notes, fucking boring. Like, it, you, it was supposed to be exciting, and it was a collect-a-thon, and it was tiring. And people said that the greatest thing that Ubisoft did with the series was take two years off or a year off between releases. And that's what brought them to, I believe it was origins. Correct. And, and then they started pumping that out through, uh, Odyssey and Valhalla. And now they're, they're finally coming out with shadows, which people are, are raking them in because of the choices they made. Whatever. I just, I'm so done with them beating the Assassin's Creed, trained to death when there's legitimately people more excited about Beyond Good and Evil 2 and they were out there recently saying it's still alive that shit is deader than fucking uh, Artax in, in Never Ending Story why did you have to bring that up of all the things <laughs> that you could have gone for you gotta bring up the Swamps of Sadness well it was brought up last week too So you could have said Never Ending Story 2 Deader, deader than Never Any Story 2, because who gives a shit about Never Any Story 2 or Never Any Story 3, but you had to go back to Artax. There's a third one? I'm pretty sure there's one. A third I mean, one. it is the Never the Ending It is a Never Ending Story, so... The point being is that you everybody is traumatized by Never Ending Story 1. Nobody's traumatized by Never Ending Story 2. And as a result, that is the apt comparison here for people who have been waiting for Beyond Good and Evil. There was a never end of story three. I didn't make that shit up. The first one came out in eighty four, the next one was nineteen ninety, and then four years later the third one came out. Well, you know why the best one's in eighty four, right? Because that's the year I was born. What's up? How about that? <laughs> Same year Ghostbusters came out. Hell yeah. Uh and you guys are also right, uh Mirage did come out last year. I thought it was two years ago. It was last year. Okay. Uh, We've been on this this Ubisoft this anti Ubisoft train for a while now. This well, not anti Ubisoft, but just very disappointed in Ubisoft and their decisions. And I remember that started a, a very heavily last year and the lead up to the Mirage release. Again, I'm, Eves, Eves, okay. I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I, again, I'm not defending Ubisoft, but they they do make other games. But yes, they are very Assassin's Creed heavy. And every other game that they've been making has become stale over years. Assassin's Creed, stale. Far Cry, stale. Uh, what have they done with the Division 2 other com- than Seasons? They're, they're coming-, coming out with Division 3 whenever that fucking comes out. <laughs> if you're still waiting for Division 3 in five years, Tricky, I am very sorry. Uh, they did say uh, they were going to start working on it after they were done with Outlaws. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Outlaws is the first like real new thing, and that's already broiled in controversy. What about Good job Ubisoft? What about Avatar, Riders Republic? You know, Tricky, did you, did you buy what, Tricky? Have you bought any of these Ubisoft games that have come out since? Like, what, what Ubisoft games have you bought outside of Assassin's Creed since the Division Two came out? Um, well, I can't remember the name of it. The the one that you liked. Oh, um, the, yeah, the Greek. Rising? Right, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Um, they canceled, by the way. They canceled, they the, canceled second the second game. game. They canceled the second game. Disappointing. Uh, I, I am going to buy uh, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. I'm looking on their website right now just to see all the games. 
I am yeah, going to buy Prince of Persia. Also remaking Sands of Time, which 2026. I am okay. in, I am interested in playing Rockspec Plus. Um, X Defiant. You played X Defiant. I did play it, but it's first person, so I didn't put too much time into it. Um, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, they. I played oh Watch Dogs Legions. I beat that. Um, I'm just looking through real quick. I uh, bought both uh, both Ghost Recons, and that leads me back to Division Two. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get all the hate. I, I I'm not I'm not trying to defend them, but I'm just saying there are other series out there. I mean, people criticize Madden. People criticize Call of Duty. People criticize all these things. Whoa. Oh, that's a... There was a long message, and it was just an ad. Matt, can you ban that person? They're already banned. Your, your wise bot did the thing. 10-4. Um, uh, Robert- yeah, that's right, Roboto. We are not apologizing for our Ubisoft yeah. hate because there is legitimate hate here. For legitimate reasons, that, especially especially after the, all the controversy that came out about shitty leadership and covering up, uh, you know, potential allegations of assault and harassment, and, and they still haven't cleaned all that up and and resolved it. So, Ubisoft gets no love, not from me. I, I'm in the same path, but I just don't hate them as much as the other guys do. The, the problem with Ubisoft is if you don't like what they've already done, chances are you're not going to want to buy any of their games in the future either because they're just going to keep doing those games. I mean, that is a good formula for success in some places. Having the same old audience you've always had. I mean, if, if you make a game, I mean, you don't think like, okay, we're going to go into our next topic, but you don't think the Health Divers 3 has already been greenlit? I don't, I mean, I don't I, know. I would hope not. All right. Well, speaking of Hell Divers Two, this is coming. I mean, Tricky, I do want to make a point. Is you, you talk about a like, you know that is a good way to do business because if something sells well, we keep just keep doing it. But you're going to get diminishing returns depending on how you handle it. True. I mean, but that's that's the you take this. I uh, see. How do I phrase this? Do Do you think that I, if, I think if, a co- if, I think a company I think a company is more willing to take a risk on a. A, a, a sequel to an IP than trying to come out with a brand new IP that people are probably going to hate. Do you think that if, if Insomniac did a Ratchet and Clank every fucking year, that people would still be excited about it, or that you would still have the same amount of people buying it by the fifth, six years out? No. No. I mean, I, I think a good balance in between the games, like two, three, maybe even four years minimum, is a good gap in between games, but... But that's the point. You're not getting that with Assassin's Creed, especially if they're coming out with remakes, too. Well, Assassin's Creed did go to every other year. Uh, this is the first time I think they went back, back to back years since Origins. Um, so. All right. Moving on. Uh, coming from Forbes and written by Paul Tassi. After the initial success of Helldivers 2 has lost 90% of its players with no signs of recovery. Helldivers 2 has a monumental success, peaking at over 458,000 concurrent players during its current uh, during its launch period. However, Steam charts have shown that more concurrent player peaks have dwindled to around 44,000. As a live game, especially one with a war map as active as Helldivers, this number is important because it drives player engagement. Despite monthly war bonds and a couple of new stratagems, no major expansion or additions to the game have been announced. Um, and then Matt wrote, Illuminate Win? I don't get that, Matt. That's the, third, the, third the third group yeah. got is the Illuminates. It's the Terminids, the Automatons, and the Illuminate. Got and it. Everyone, there, there's there been hints within the game that the Illuminate will some come, sometime, at some point, come into the game. But you okay. can see that. And uh, one thing commenters did mention in this article that the author failed to note is that the forced Sony account debacle, Sony still hasn't made the game available for purchase in countries where you're not able to make a PSN account, eliminate any chance of new players to replace those who uninstalled and never went back due to Sony's boneheaded, short-sighted scheming. I'm going to step off and say this uh, just on Matt's last point. While I agree... That Sony should bring it back into those countries. 
I think an argument could be made to say that they shouldn't sell it to them because then you're going to have the outcry of why can I play this on PC but I can't play this on PlayStation. Now, I'm not saying that to defend Sony. I'm saying that argument can be made. Is saying I live in XYZ country, but I can't play because I don't own a PC good enough to run it. So, that being said, uh, I will throw the floor to Matt because uh, Matt kind of shook his head when I said that. You have a valid point, but that removes the the idea that many players in those countries just already only own a PC because you're not able to get a PlayStation and make a PlayStation account. So there's no valid argument to that aspect of, you know, yeah, people will complain, but it's a it's a PC. There's already a PC market. There's no Sony market because you can't make a Sony account. Um you know, sure, there's people who probably import their PlayStations and play them, even though they can't get them online. But the idea here is, I think, nobody expected Helldivers 2 to be this successful. And as a result, uh, the, the team at Arrowhead had to deal with the massive launch, and now things have settled down to where they're about what they expect from Helldivers 1. So, as a result, what we've got is still a ma- massively successful game and a lot of people who were burned because of Sony's decision. And people said, well, if that's what Sony's going to do, we're not going to trust them. We're not going to play the game anymore. There's plenty of other games for them to play. Do you really think that the the whole account leaking debacle really drove away people that are not coming back? I mean, obviously there are some, but do you think it was a large enough number that didn't come back? I think it's larger than you think, but smaller than we're led to believe. And you still have people who have maxed out their character, maxed out all their stratagems and said, all right, well, until there's something new, I'm not coming back. There's nothing more for me to play. They've, they've maxed out the player experience and that, that plays numbers too. All right. Uh, yield to go to you. I mean, Matt's not wrong. I mean, I've got the platinum. I've got all the stratagems. Um, the The only thing that kind of makes me come back is, uh, you know, one, it's like, oh, let, you know, we, some of us will get together and play some Helldivers, or they've got a new war bond. And so it's like, well, let me earn some medals. That way I've got a bunch of medals when the new war bond drops, I can work through it. Other than that, I mean... Our Friday night group has moved on. We're moving. We've moved on to Monster Hunter because most of us have got the platinum in it. I mean, and it, unlike the first game where you could end the war, right now it doesn't look like there's an end of the war in sight. So when you're it, when you're not really, or feels like you're not pushing towards anything, it's you know you kind of get bored. All right, Alex? Yeah, I'm kind of maxed out on a lot of my resources. Uh, requisition slips, uh, samples, whether they be the super samples, the rare samples, or the common samples, I don't I have any need for them because I bought pretty much everything except the, some of the stuff that's in the war bond, and you just need super credits and, and war bond medals for that. Um, so, I mean, every game has a lifespan, um, and this one kind of has settled into probably the player base that they're going to have going forward. But, you know, no game stays as hot as Helldivers was from the beginning. You know, there are other games that are going to come out and people are going to go play something else. And not everyone has time to support a live service game. It can it can be overwhelming at times if you're trying to play other experiences as well. So the game is still fun. Um, they put out consistent, you know, DLC that you could buy into and you'd <coughs> have to spend money if you didn't want to. You just had to play the game. But this game, for a lot of people, they had fun with it. And now they're moving on to something else. I think that this is kind of proof that despite having a monstrous explosive start to this, you know, live service game, the live service model is hard to maintain because of people just move on. There's too many things to play. There's too many things to watch on television. There's different avenues that our attention span goes down to every single day. And you don't always have time to sit here and for months on end or years on end support a game. So that all factors in. I've said it before and you'll touch on it. 
Um, I probably sound like a broken record, but I think the biggest mistake they've made, and I will lay this on the Game Master, uh, is the fact that there was a chance to take out the automatons and bring the Illuminates in, and they brought the automatons back. And the automatons have been on the map in a dominant position ever since. The Terminids have always been on the map. And when you go in that game and you look at the map, and we've made no progress, I don't care if we knock the automatons off the map for two days. It doesn't fucking matter. The map looks like the same as when it came out what, four months ago? And that's not good, because as a player, you'd be like, yes, I have unlocked new weapons. I've gotten stuff from the War Bonds. But the war map still looks the same, so we're just beating our head against the wall. Could, that's not good. Could the, argument be, not, could the argument be made that they brought them back because they wanted to diversify the enemies you're fighting, and there are people that would rather fight the Automatons than the Terminots? Again, you could... Have well, people prefer to fight the terminates anyway, so you could have the terminates in there and then bring the illuminates in if you really want to diversify. No, what they're trying to do is they're trying to elongate the war to try to keep people engaged longer. But what probably has happened is a lot of people, again, I, I've said it, I feel it. I'm not, we're not making any progress on this war map, we're not. And if I'm just going in, look at the same stuff over and over again, I don't care about the major orders anymore. I just don't. I let other people do that, and I'll just get the free war bond medals and I'll go play wherever I want. So I really think the game ma the game master has mismanaged this entire war. Now I don't know if he's getting orders from above him to say, "Hey, you gotta you know do this, do this, do this," but bringing the automatons back into the war when you could have instead brought the illuminates in, we're fighting the same enemies over and over again. Whether it's the, the automatons or the terminants, it doesn't matter. We're fighting the same two factions on a war map that's not moving. So when you get minimal change like that. People are going to say, I'm just going to leave because it's like, you know, never beating a game. Why would you want to play a game that you can never beat? It's, I, yeah, that, that's my feelings. I think they've made a massive mistake. But if they have this player base that's just going to keep playing it because they think, you know, it's a fun game, then the war can continue on. But they're going to have to scale back the challenge. I mean, they're going to have to change, you know, what their expectations for major orders and stuff because when you have a much smaller player base, that player base can't do as much. As a much larger player base, as over a hundred, you know, 200,000 people playing at once. Now you have forty thousand, fifty thousand. They're just they have to scale everything back. So well, but okay. I definitely think it, it's it's worth noting that the forty four thousand is just Steam. We don't know what the number is on PlayStation. Well, I mean, I was looking at the war map the other day, and it wasn't over fifty thousand. It was less than fifty thousand. So that number is, I mean, it's not tremendous. I no, mean, I, I I don't know what the number is. I'm just saying that. It's just worth noting that the 44,000 is Steam concurrent players because we don't know how many concurrent players are on PlayStation at any particular time because there's no real scale for that other than going into the game and see how many people are playing at the time. Yeah, well, but if, I you, have if you saw no more than 50, then we would say 6,000 for console. And you got to remember, most of the people that bought this game were playing it on PC. Um, and I have seen a recommend. I have seen people mention that if they really want to bump up the numbers to this game again, put it on Xbox too. Is is this a? I I know it's a PlayStation exclusive, but is it a is is it a Sony company that owns them? Sony published the game, but they don't but own Arrowhead. Arrowhead. Arrowhead does not is not owned by Sony. So the developer Arrowhead made the game. They are not owned by Sony. They are independent, but Sony published the game. Uh, that could be the limitation then. Well, no, but Sony obviously is going to be. Are they not the publisher for the Lego Horizon Adventures? They are, I think. They should it's be. Going to switch. So they, should. they obviously can put any game they want on another console. It just depends on if they choose to or not. True. I mean, they may be happy with the success of Helldivers. You know, the, I saw where the game sold over 12 million copies. So the right. game has been massively successful. They may say, hey, this has been great. We don't really care if it to put it on Xbox. I mean, we'll just let the, the audience be what it is. And, you know, because honestly, if you're Sony, you don't want Helldivers to live forever because at some point Concord's going to come out, you know, fall on his fucking face. But. <laughs> They're going to want as many people available to play that game as they can, so you're not going to want people, you know, 200,000 people, 400,000 people playing Helldivers then. All right, so I'll ask this question, and then uh, we'll move on. Uh, I'll go to Yield first. Yield, uh, one of the, in Matt's notes, it says that uh, despite monthly war bonds, a couple new strategies, no major expansions or additions to the game have been announced. Is there something in your mind, other than bringing in the third enemy, that would bring you back to the game on a regular basis? Uh, progression on the map, like like Alex said. I mean, the automatons were off the map. They brought them back. 
I was annoyed, but I was like, okay. But ever since then, like Alex said, it's been a tug of war on the map. You, you know, the super earth makes gains, the hell divers make gains and then we lose it. And then we make grounds and we lose it. And it's, it's like beating your head against the wall. So, you know, I've, I've done what I need to do in the game. It's still fun. It's still enjoyable to play the new, the new planet that they've added, you know, or biodome as everybody's calling it, that they've added is, is fun to play on, but you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I need something other than, I mean, I'll, I'll hop back for a new stratagem and see how that works, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ready to move on. All right, Alex, same question. I mean, like I said, I've played this week a little bit, try, maybe five, six, seven rounds, um, trying to get war bond medals for the Viper Commandos to, to finish out that war bond. Um, I'm almost to the third tier on that, but really, I mean, add in a new enemy. Kick one of them off the map. They should have left the automatons off the map and brought in the Illumits. That's what they should have done. And I, again, I blame the Game Master. This has been mismanagement of this game, just d- despite how successful it's been, complete mismanagement by people who are feeding that person those decisions or if he is making those decisions himself. Um, but really, what it's, it's going to... To get me to play every night like I was before, you're going to have to see an end of the war in sight. We're going to have to be kicking some ass, and it's just like it's the tide is going to have to be... It's like it's going to have to take all of us to get him back in there to putting that cap on the bottle um, and, and, and throwing, taking out the alien trash. Like... We have to have victory in sight because, again, if there's not new things to unlock and nobody else is playing, there's really no dr- – I'm not going to just pop on to fight the automatons and the terminids for the 10,000th time. I mean I've got like 44,000 kills in the game. Like why – I've got the platinum trophy. I've got almost everything unlocked. Why do I need to come back to fight the same enemies again just because they're trying to stretch out and elongate the life of this game when they've already lost such a large portion of their audience to attrition? All right, Matt, same question. I still have stuff I'm earning, so I still play every so often, but I also only play with my friends. I don't play with randoms. I don't go in there tryharding. It's my friends and I go in there when we ha- want to have a good time. This is Monster Hunter for me. It's it's fun to go in, do a couple missions, then we go on and do something else. All right. And I, I, I'll only say that uh, the times I jump in, um, I'm jumping in by myself, but I feel like I can actually hold my own now because I have the war dog on my back. Um, I feel a little bit more protected, so to speak, and more, be able to fight. So, the I'm going in doing like a mission or two, and then I'm popping out, uh, mostly trying to get the war bonds. Uh, uh, excuse me, not the war bonds, the uh, the medals for the war bonds. Um, but I I, I kind of got discouraged when I figured out that because I'm playing on lower difficulties, obviously, because I'm not that good at it right now. Uh, that I can't progress on my upgrades because I got to play on hard difficulties to be be able to get the uh, the better samples, and they're not available unless I play on the least challenging. And then I got to play on another high difficulty to get the uh, the third super rare. Yep, you yeah. got to play on six, six, seven, or eight. Yeah, so it's to me, I got discouraged, but um, because I I can't upgrade anything until I jump in there, and then you know when I go to play, it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. And I know you guys are awake to pop on with me, so it's like I don't want to play with randoms, but I also you know. I just, I, just, I just pop in, do what I can, and then I pop out. So, so tricky. Yes, sir. So, the best advice I can give you when you're playing solo on, on higher difficulties is really there. And I know this sounds really simple. There are, there are two choices that you can make. You can go in and, and just get the mission completed and try not to make too much of a ruckus because any gunfire, any bombs that you drop, when you are any computers that you activate, they any anything bugs or automatons they come running. Right. So if you have something to wipe out, you know the, the the points of interest as you come across them. If you can wipe them all out in one go to run in, grab the samples and get out before the patrols get there. That's the best thing that you can do. Otherwise. You're just going to have to find a, a set of weapons that work for you to be able to fight off the, the rush 
so to speak, or the bug breach until you can move on. Yeah, right now I'm working with uh, two different uh, turret stratums uh, and the war dog. I generally put them both, uh, both those down on opposite sides, and then I have the war dog to just basically watch my back. I, I'm not too happy with the gun I'm using right now. It's uh, It looks like an electric gun. Um, I, I, I would say use the breaker. I, I think you suggested that to me before. I'm, I'll have to look into that. Um, but I'll play in, I think I'm playing on either Trivial or Easy right now. Because uh, I went in uh, trying to help out the the major order for uh, when we fight the Automatons, and I was getting my ass handed to me by the, well, yeah, the bigger I, ones. Personally, I like to use, uh, well, you're not high enough yet. I like to use the personal shield generator going after the automatons. So that way I can survive a little longer while they're shooting. Yeah. Um, there is a submachine gun that works really well against them, but that's in a, a different war bond. All right. Uh, let's put a pin in this and move on. We have some listener questions. Time to check my social media. Yeah. Hey, my shirt has never been more uh, top. Accurate. No, never more appropriate. All right, before we go over to Facebook for our questions where you guys can leave us questions, I'm going to pop over to YouTube real quick because we had a comment the other day. Uh, what was that, Yield? Did oh, geez. <laughs> uh, we had a comment. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, against the uh, the wishes of some of the members of the show, I put out uh, short videos to, you know, hope on uh, TikTok, no, Instagram. No, no, see, he doesn't put out short videos. Oh, here we go. The AI puts out short videos. The he a- just programs it and hits enter. He's trying to get all the benefit of something else doing all the work for him. The AI clips uh, segments of the show for conversation pieces and puts them out onto social media. So we do it on Twitch. Uh, excuse me, not Twitch. Uh, on Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, and I do apologize because it's been pointed out to me a couple times that the AI didn't Sometimes. really... Uh, Accurately to deter- uh, to depict what was in the video, but one of the videos that did <laughs> there, there was one that said join Mark Cerny. It's like Mark Cerny is not a part of this conversation; I, he's just a topic of it. All right, so there was a video because um, Yield has said this a couple times on the show. You know, uh, playing games shouldn't be this difficult, uh, and the title of the video was "Why Making and Playing Video Games Should Not Be Hard." Uh, a gentleman or a lady—I uh, don't want to assume genders here. Uh, by the name of Nate Peace two five two three, uh, left this comment on a video two weeks ago, and I missed it. Uh, he, they say I make games for fun, and I and as I love to code, and can tell you the reason it's really simple. People don't buy games that are aren't either super high quality graphics, super hard, or just really polished. Even and even then, if you're not a huge game studio, unless you make a YouTube channel and market entire process, it's nearly impossible to make money off of the game. With gaming, you need to earn every sale if you're not one of the huge game studios. The, the huge game studios practically have a monopoly because every good game now needs a huge team of people working all hours of the night and day in order to make it. Making a game is more complicated than you think. Um, of all the comments, I felt like that one I should mention on the show. Uh, do you guys have any comments before we go to our Facebook questions? Guild, I'll ask you first. No, because I don't know what entirely was said in the video to be able to you you been comment, comment <sighs> positively or negative. I have said that several times on a lot of things that it shouldn't be this hard to well to it, play video games. But most of that is in reference to the fact that Microsoft was having me jump through way too many hoops to play Sea of Thieves. Correct. Um, they're just basically saying, like, we, we criticized the game should be this hard to make or play. And they are just and they were just coming in saying, it's really not that easy to make the games as much as you think it is. So. Gotcha. Uh, Alex or Matt, do you have any comments? I, I don't think anybody was saying that it was... Making games was easy. What we were just saying was it shouldn't, there shouldn't be this many obstacles put in the player's path to play games. And this goes back to the Helldivers example. 
We, it was working just fine without the Sony PSN integration. Throwing that in just complicated things needlessly. That's where I'll leave that at. And I think we also talked about it when it came to like checking online checks for games and downloading instead of just being able to play a game off disc. Yeah, it, it's kind of like an unlock key or something like that where you have to have an online check to a server and then you can play the game. I think that's also what was referenced in that. But I don't think we ever talked about strictly like making games. All right. First question coming off of Facebook coming from uh, Thomas Crawford. Best Corey's movies. Uh, would it be the Lost Boys? I'm assuming he means uh, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Yeah, um, I Does don't have, have to, to include both of them. It just says best Corey's movies. I I, I don't have an opinion because I've never really a fan of either one of those actors. Well, I mean, because Corey Feldman was the voice of Donatello in some of those tra- in the Teenage Mutant Turtle movies. Okay. All right, um, so then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's the Goonies. The Goonies is the best Corey Feldman movie, and I'd. Honestly, I don't. Honestly, it's tragic that he died as young as he did. Corey Haim had a lot of issues. Um, no one wanted to see that, but I, I don't care about his movie career. I, I just was, Corey Haim was never one of my favorite actors. Even growing up, I didn't care too much for what he did. So Matt, uh, since I only know the Goonies, I'm just going Goonies and yield. Ditto. Ten four. All right. So this next question is going to have some. Uh, Explain to do by me because I'm pretty sure Alex and you'll know nothing about it. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Will wants to know, what are y'all's opinions regarding the Dr. Disrespect hoopla? Uh, I will ask Alex and you'll, do you have any idea what this is? I've heard of Dr. Disrespect, but I couldn't recall where I've heard it from. Probably here on the show. So other than that, I have no clue what we're talking about. Okay. Alex, you have no clue either, right? I am very much aware of what a hoopla is, but I do not know how Dr. Disrespect fits into that. Okay, so Dr. Disrespect is one of, well, was one of the biggest streamers uh, on, you know, that was making a career out of it. He, uh, his real name is Guy Beam. He was a video game developer back in the day, uh, left that and started his streaming career. Uh, Dr. Disrespect is his online persona. Uh, a couple years ago, I think three or four years ago, he was uh, randomly banned on Twitch, and no reason was ever given of why he was banned. Um, it was a little bit of controversy at the time. He later then started streaming on YouTube and has now gained back more people than he w- ever had watching him on U- on Twitch. He has more on now on YouTube. Recently, a former employee of Twitch came out and said that Dr. Disrespect was banned because he was caught doing uh, Twitch whispers, which is basically like a, uh, a Facebook message, you know, on there, and that he was talking to underage people. Um, and this was right around the same time that he did a stream uh, admitting that he was, uh, he cheated on his wife. Uh, Dr. Disrespect has responded to this um, on Twitter uh, and then he's also saying, uh, also announcing he was going to take a break and go away for a while and come back. Uh, his message on Twitter, were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were there any real intentions behind those messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual mutual conversations that sometimes lead too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I had never even met the individual. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear. It was not a criminal case against me, nor criminal charges have ever been brought against me. Uh, There is more to the message, but it doesn't really... uh, Okay. Now, from a moral standpoint, I absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should never have happened. I get it. I'm not perfect. I fucking own my shit. This was stupid. Now, with all this said, don't get it fucking mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a fucking destruction zone. I'm no fucking predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me knows that uh, anybody that... Anybody that knows me fucking knows I, where I stand on those things and those type of people. Fuck that. 
This that's a different level of disgust that I fucking hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Now, I'm not going to defend Dr. Disrespect on this at all. The only thing that I have to say about this whole entire thing, the only saving grace he possibly has is if he somehow didn't know they were a minor. But from his own statement, it sounds like he knew they were a minor. Sounds like he has no, he shouldn't be getting so angry at people. Sorry. Like, you're an adult. Don't ever entertain conversations with minors, regardless of what the tone is. Just don't do it. So I, I don't understand why. I don't think he has a right to be angry at people throwing shit around. Sorry. Yield. Just go away. That's, uh, my, that's my advice to him is go away. When you... How do I want to word this without being wrong or... Uh, when you put yourself out there as much as that, a streamer and so forth. And he even admitted that even though nothing happened, the conversation kind of went that way. It, it doesn't matter. You're going to get labeled no matter what. If that's how the world is. That's how social media is, and you make your life on social media. So you kind of shot yourself in the foot, intentional or not. And so your your cuss worded laden apology probably added more fuel to the fire. How old is this guy, Doctor Disrespect? Yeah, I'll look it up right now. I mean, again, regardless, I mean, talking to a minor is still wrong, but, I mean, if you're in your fucking 50s or something like that, why the fuck are you doing that in the first place? But He's 42. Okay, yeah, that's... Why are you talking to someone who's underage, then? I, I don't understand. There's no reason to do it, regardless of what the conversation is, so... If you... I mean, yeah, uh, dude, hold, hold on a second. more careful. I, I, I just want to say, it hasn't been confirmed, but it... it it's been said that the minor that he st- he was talking to was 17. So okay. in, in so. some states, that is legal. Oh, don't. I, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not defending him at all. I'm just saying in some states He's that is legal. He's forty fucking two talking to however old this person was. No. Um, if you're a streamer, you shouldn't be entertaining messages from your community. Honestly, you should be like, hey, I'm gonna like keep it to the chat. If you have a chat, a stream, keep it to that. Don't, I would say, don't put yourself out there in a particularly precarious position and have these, you know, chats with people, like these direct message chats. I, I don't know. I, if you don't know these people, you probably shouldn't be having direct message chats with them. All right. Uh, people, if you got fans, keep that shit to the chat. If, before I go to Matt, uh, Black Ass in the chat says, Bad boy, little boy, now you know you're not supposed to be to- having adult talk with minors. I agree. Matt, your uh, your thoughts on this whole thing? I say this with the lens of I hate the Dr. Disrespect persona. I do too. I find it over the top, annoying, completely irrelevant and not needed in this kind of, in the gaming sphere. From everything I've read, uh, you know, not including the quote that you just put out, it, it seems like he's dug his own grave, as the gentleman on this show said already. Um, the the issue here is there's there was a lot of litigation, uh, Twitch, and disrespect had come to a uh, what was it? Um, an agreement? Yeah, there was an agreement. It was it was settled out of court, essentially. Where, Correct. Where neither party admitted to any wrongdoing. And now all this other stuff comes up, and uh, there's a journalist out there, uh, Alana Pierce. She goes by Charles Lanazard on YouTube. Did a did a very can't good stand analysis her. on it. What were you saying, Tricky? I can't stand her. Well, good for you. <laughs> the... 
already because I already know your your perception of our boy Jason Schreier, so I can't trust you when it comes to your your journalistic uh, preference. Uh, fair uh, enough. <laughs> the she did a very good analysis on the situation, saying there's a whole lot of things that may have come up where certain things may not have been able to be said until now. Uh, whether it's the victim, whether it's it's disrespect or somebody else, and there's always things that come out with whether people say you knew, why didn't you say anything? And and uh, you know there was a tweet out there, somebody calling out Ninja, being like, hey, <laughs> you know, covering shit up just like uh, other people at Twitch, right, Ninja? And, and implying that Ninja knew things not related to this, but that Ninja had stuff going on that you know Twitch may have covered up, and. It's all just seemingly the drama that comes with being a big time streamer and doing shit that you may not have known. And again, he's talking to this person. At what point does he become aware of their age? And, you know, then he turns out in his thing saying, well, maybe it leaned too much in the wrong direction. No, there is no wrong. There is no leaning. You, You did something and you're admitting to it. And at this point, uh, if you haven't seen it, the video of him live playing Elden Ring and his phone notification goes off and he just looks at it and watches as his career Dies. just went down the toilet is peak YouTube TV. So definitely go check it out as I see. I t- I'm not taking any real sick satisfaction in knowing this guy's career is over as a streamer, but at least I don't have to watch that stupid persona <laughs> anymore. I wish the guy luck. I, I hope he turns his life around to where it's needed, but I never cared about him. So whatever happens to him is his own doing. All right. Uh, black chaos in the chat says, I'm not entertaining chicks in their twenties. Cause my oldest daughter is in her twenties. I agree. And then, uh, Roboto, uh, has a question for all of us. What stratagems do y'all have in place when the groupies hit you up to so yield? What, what strategies do you use when, uh, your groupies come to attack you. Well, it depends on what groupies are attacking me. What groupies are attacking me? Your trophy horse groupies. I, I don't have any. I didn't play into it. Alex? Uh, I mean, I typically roll with the... I mean, it does matter on the, the mission type we're doing or what the daily uh, objective is, the personal order is, but I generally roll with a um, 500k... Um, orbital laser, uh, rail cannon strike, and then the uh, the uh, quasar cannon. All right, Matt. I find a stone cold stunner really is effective in getting people to understand that I want nothing to do with them. Uh and I'm just gonna say uh, a war dog to beat up all the attackers. All right, next question. They think of me a guard dog, but we get what you mean. Uh, what did I say, war dog? All right, next question come from Thomas. What is the greatest instrumentals on a song that you don't even realize? Mine is Tears for Fears over Head. Tears for Fear, Head Over Heels. Um, greatest instrumentals song that you don't even realize. I don't know, I, I'm kind of partial to the to One by Metallica. Hold on, could you repeat the question? I was trying to. What is the greatest instrumental on a song that you don't even realize? Which is a hard question because if you don't realize it, how do you know it's the greatest? <laughs> um, I guess he basically means like, what is the the best music being played during a song that you know you don't really realize how good the song is because of the in- the, the instruments? I'm just assuming that's what he says. That's what he's meaning. Oof, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I've got an, a, an instrumental that I really like in a song, but I don't. Which is. Uh, it's the instrumental part for Tantric's breakdown from the first album. Okay. It's really good. Yield. Oh, while you're thinking, uh, black ass in the chest says, I just saw the video of said text message. I can't stop laughing at his mood change. It is drastic. It's it's almost the same one as when he uh, got alerted while he was streaming about his Twitch ban. Uh, Yield, do you have an answer? I think my wave. My wave. My wave. Soundgarden. Okay, 
Matt, do you have an answer? Um, I mean, there's a ton of songs I listen to, instrumentals. It, it, it hits me. There's uh, a Godsnack song called Say My Name, and there's a guitar riff behind the vocals that is really just very perfect. So I'll just go with that for now. I mean, I, I didn't want to cheap out and say, like, Orion by Metallica. <laughs> Because that, that, that song is just instrumental. so um, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it sounds like Thomas's question is more like you're listening to a song that's an instrumental somewhere there that you know you, you don't na- naturally realize, but it's very good. It, that's it, how I took it. Is he, I mean, does he... I'm just guessing. Does he, does he, is he trying to say, like, what's the best solo in a song? I don't think so. I think it's just instrumental. Like, you're listening to a song, and, and it suddenly hits you what, what's being played in the background. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with one by Metallica. All right, last question come from Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at this one already. Can we have a moment of silence for the wise man, Paul Heyman, after he was viciously attacked by the bloodline Friday on SmackDown? Sorry, Matt, I know you love wrestling so much. Yeah, I was impressed he took that bump hey, whoa, whoa. to that table. We're supposed to be having a moment of silence. Try to pay the proper respects, but all right, sorry. Okay, moment of silence. Go ahead, Alex. Oh, I mean, I'm just at his advanced age, uh, him being, you know, power bombed through the announce table. I got him credit for it because he, he hasn't taken a bump like that in a long time, if ever. Did, did, so, did you hear that pop when he said, I, am, I, I, I do not acknowledge you? Oh, yeah. No, it was a monster pop. And <sighs> they're. They're building up to obviously Roman coming back and him getting a po- the pop of the century because, you know, Roman's real life dad Sika passed away this weekend and he just watched you know another father father figure get destroyed by the you know the bloodline you know in kayfabe, um, so you got to factor that you got to think that's going to factor into whatever promo he comes back and does because yeah I, I, he's he's going to come back as a mega baby baby face people are chanting for him every week so. I I think Roman's uh, returns got delayed a little bit uh, sadly his father did pass away recently so. He's really yeah. father, so uh, that might get delayed. Yield uh, your thoughts on Paul Heyman's bump. I never actually saw the bump. I heard about it. I did see the video of him not acknowledging Solo. Um, it's They're building for something big. I don't know why all of a sudden everybody's chanting for, for Roman now. I Because they don't want Solo to take over. Really? I was wanting Solo to take over when they were teasing it to begin with. So I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Roman. So the, the, the fickle WWE crowd that will flip on a dime because the guy's gone for a bit. I always laugh at them. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a hell of a bump. He basically took a, uh, remember the old shield triple power bomb over the table. Yeah. He, that's what he took. He took the triple power bomb over the table. Well, that is a big bump at 58. Uh, 52, one of the two. He's somewhere in that range. Black Chaos in the chat says, Bra, uh, RIP, Paul, he took it like a champ. We want Roman. Solo ain't it. Uh, he just hasn't been built up yet. I, I will say, I between that and the Wyatt six, uh, Sick, um, I'm very interested in both shows now. Like I, I want to catch them live. That, Don't forget Punk, Punk and Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a little wrestling, a little bit more wrestling talk. Did you guys see um, that uh, the Wyatt Sick uh, got called out for uh, what they did after the show when they got debuted? Appar- yeah. Apparently, uh, all of them went to like a, I think it's a water water burger or an In and Out or whatever. Yeah, they, that. they they were all f- photographed with a fan with their masks off. Yeah, they basically revealed who everybody was. Everybody knew who they were. So it's well. I mean, there was well, speculation, yeah. but I mean, we knew, but you know, it, was, it wasn't confirmed. And then hours after they debuted, they just basically confirmed who they were. So, um, uh, yeah, it was a hell of a bump. Um, I'm very interested in the bloodline story. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they're going to get Jimmy and Jay back with uh, Roman. Yep. So, all right. All wrestling right. talk done. Yes, wrestling talk is done. You can come back now, Matt. Yay. <laughs> All right, so topic of the week. Sony's new PlayStation emulator has been tested, and it's another disappointing effort. This is coming from Eurogamer, written by Will Judd. Sony's recent established 
uh, system to emulate PlayStation 2 games on the PS5 as part of the PlayStation Plus premium offerings is fallen flat. There have been numerous problems, including the PAL slash NTST, uh, NTSC compatibility flaws, uh, scaling options on the PS4 container app, as well as severe lack of games. Recently, Sony released Sly Cooper, Tomb Raider Anniversary, and Star Wars The Clone Wars into the system. While some games have experienced fixes like Sly Cooper slowdowns that occurred on the original systems, other flaws arose, including glitches, including lack of music on certain levels. An analysis by Benchmark and YouTube channel Digital Foundry cover the host of issues and technical questions resulting from the half-ass implementation emulation system by Sony. I'm just going to start this off by saying I was browsing my PlayStation 5 the other day and I saw the Sly Collection, which is the PS3 version of the game that was upscaled. That looks a hell of a lot better than this Sly Cooper game. Hell of a lot better. Um... And then, Alex, I'll ask you this, because you obviously got the Platinum. Did, when you started Sly Cooper on the PS5, was your, the right stick, was it flipped for you? I talked about that. It was inverted, Did you? yeah. Hor- horizontally, if you, if you press, if you went left on the stick, you looked right. Right. If you, because usually inverted means you're looking up, down, like the, the flight controls. Right. Um, but no, it was very, I mean, it was very jarring at first. I mean, I got used to it, but I still didn't like it. You know, you could fix that, right? I thought I tried to go into the menu and fix the controls, but you got didn't. You got to hit, you got to hit the actual start button on the controller and then go in there and change it. And you can map the buttons. Oh. Oh. Um, I will say that there are some, at least in that, the, with that particular game, the Sly Cooper or the Thievius Raccoonus, there are broken trophy images. So some of the trophy images do not show up even after you unlock them, which kind of sucks. Hopefully they fix that. But. Yeah. It, and and there's different trophies for the the slide on the, on the PS5 compared to the PS3 version. Uh, yeah, it's an overall better trophy list. But I mean, other than that, I haven't had many issues with Ghost Hunter or Sly Cooper, both PS2 games. All right, Yield. I know you didn't play it because you're not uh, that high on PlayStation Plus. But your thoughts on the emulator falling flat? Nice job, Sony. All right. Matt, I mean, is is there any surprise? Like, people went after Nintendo for kind of how lazy they were about the Mario 3D All Stars collection. People went after Rockstar for how the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, um, the remasters that came out a few years ago, how lazy that was. And then now, Sony, you know, if, if Sony is doing lazy emulation where it's not, you know, tip top shape, I mean, is anyone surprised people are cutting corners? Well, I mean, it, it is worth noting that the PlayStation 5 versions and the PlayStation 4 versions of the game they are running the ps2 game so that could be the graphics issues uh but yeah i i think they should have just upscaled the the ps3 version but that's just me matt you're more the technical guy with uh, comes to stuff like this what are your thoughts it, it's alex and really you know yield said it right is that these companies think that they can go in and do video game emulation just because they're the company and they know what they're doing, but they don't. They've proven time and time again what they put out, whether it's the PlayStation Classic, the SNES Classic, the the Genesis Mini, whatever it is, these companies aren't taking the lessons that people who actually make good emulation systems uh, are, are finding out. They just slap something together and say, oh, everybody will buy this because this is what they want. Well, no, they want games that play better, that that work better, that don't have as many issues. I know, Alex, you said that you're, you've are you been running fine, and that's great. I'm glad you're having that experience, but there are people that are running into problems playing these games. You know, it, it's – I'll see a Nintendo, Nintendo emulator playing Mega Man, and you still have system slowdowns. Because there's too many people, there's too many enemies on screen, or there's too much going on, and the hardware that they're playing it on is massively better than what was on the Nintendo. So the end result here is it, again, it's a lazy slap together system that they put in there just because they figure people would play it, and unfortunately, it's working in some cases. Uh, Digital Foundry is really the group that I go to when, and trust with their deep dive analysis on systems and whether it's working or not. 
And, you know, they said there's some success, but there's also a lot of failures. And again, Sony and all the systems, you know, except maybe Xbox, because they, they put out some of the best backwards compatibility out there with the ability to, to uh, generate frames and increase frame rates on some of their older games. But all these other companies are just putting stuff out and, and taking none of the lessons from the people who actually make good working emulators. And it's, it's sad. It's the system's worse off for it. Uh, I currently, I'm not experiencing any problems with Sly Cooper myself, other than that the controls being backwards, but I was able to fix that. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know why Sony made some of these choices. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. You want these games to be successful and whatnot. You, you got to do a better job. That's that's basically where I'm going to leave this. You, get, you just got to do a better job. And you would hope that if there are early bumps in the road like this, if people are having issues, which, I mean, I, I trust that people are, that Sony can go in and fix it and make things better in the future. Didn't Sony hire a studio that all they did was ports? Blue something. I, I believe we heard something like that. Yeah, I can't Blue, think of the studio. What, what's what's the studio that Blue Point? Blue Point. That's the one. Blue, but, but they didn't. They didn't buy Blue Point. Blue Point's working on a new game. They're not just porting these games over. I know. My point is, they maybe they should just left Blue Point on that. You don't buy Blue Point to have them fucking put PS2 games on premium. You, you I, I, okay, maybe about Blue Point, but you, you pay somebody that this is their only job. You hire a studio, and this is their job. If if they want to get into the market of putting out classics and whatnot, you should put a studio and dedicate them to doing that. Somebody has to do it. Why not just buy a studio that, that that's their sole duty? Well, they may already do that. Well, I mean, uh, Daryl did say that they uh, he heard somebody did they Sony did that, but I don't know. All right, let's wrap up the show. Um, as as I'm watching the video that yield doesn't like about Pan, uh, Pantera going down the yellow brick road. You didn't like that yield? I, I, uh, no. <laughs> All right, let's do. I was, so. I was just like, what, what, who, what, uh, whatever. It, it, that, it's, 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 that's your it, thing. It's a stupid video. Uh, two things. One, if you want a free, uh, Astro, uh, uh, avatars, uh, I'm going to give you some codes. If you're in North America, uh, type in MXHXPJGLHQA2. If you're in all Europe, Australia, or New Zealand, your code is JPFQ66LNQGLJ. If you're in Japan, 4GDEJE36476E. If you're in Korea, a M eight N H E seven E A eight X P and if you're in Hong Kong seven M three H D six J E J D A seven or A A J sorry A J. Uh, you have to do that all before July eleventh. Uh, that being said, let's do some shout outs. Uh, I was gonna go to Alex first, but he walked away. We'll go to Yield first. Uh, shout out to everybody who was in the Twitch chat and those who sent us uh, Facebook questions. Uh, shout out to Tricky, Alex, and Matt for recording this evening. Shout out to V for all the behind the stuff, all the behind the scenes stuff that she does. Uh, shout out to all the pimps and the madams of the whoredom. Thank you for downloading, listening, hanging out with us, playing games with us occasionally. You are all awesome. Uh, shout out to all my nieces and nephews who come and hunt out last night and went up and watched some fireworks. And I'll call that completion for this week. All right, Matt. Shout out to you gents for recording tonight. Shout out to the Channel 3 community. Uh, make sure to go to channel3.gg to gamify your social media. By the time you all hear this, the new season nine will be out and every new season that comes out, some new features come with it. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, the 
Other thing is, by the time you hear this, uh, Summer Games Done Quick, benefiting Doctors Without Borders is going on. Not that we're an official sponsor in any way, shape, or form, but I always like pitching that event when it's out because this is a fun time seeing watch, seeing people go do speed runs. So go to do twitch.tv slash games done quick just to watch all the fun stuff that happens. Like one year they did, um, it was the original punch out blindfolded with two different players, one punching, one moving. It was insane. Uh, also, the other thing is just... Uh, on a personal note, as a reminder, I am having a procedure done this week. The guys don't know this. This is brand new. But the thing is, it's benign. Everything's fine. Go get your butts checked. Just make sure. Everybody, go get your colonoscopies. <laughs> go get to your doctors. Just make sure. Uh, it, it's. We recently had the anniversary, if any of you people knew, Total Biscuit was a streamer slash game advocate, and uh, he died of uh cancer and it's because people sometimes are too embarrassed to get things done so i'm out here putting myself on the line being embarrassed telling y'all go get your butts checked but finally uh shout out to my wife v thank you for everything you do on and off the show i i i had a cold ask me two years ago i was really embarrassed when i left the office <sighs> well that's because it wasn't the doctor doing it for you no it's, but I... no it's because i ripped a fart right in front of her this really hot Secretary. Uh, Alex, don't shake your head at me, Matt. It's part of the procedure. You you have to let the air go after you're done. Alex, your shout-out, sir. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to this wicked burn that I got from the sun today from being out in the sun. That, uh, hopefully, that, That's your penalty deal. for going at Olive Garden. Uh, please, I, I wouldn't have gotten this from going to Olive Garden. I was inside our Olive Garden. Oh, that's ca- that that's karma. Salad. That's karma hitting you back. Never ending salad. Uh, give a shout out to our awesome community, the Fuel to the Fire, the Shrimp Yours. Thank you all for joining us, everyone who joined the chat tonight, everyone who submitted questions, and however you listen and download the show. Um, we appreciate you so very much. Shout out to Yield, Matt, and Tricky tonight uh, for for coming on here on this Sunday night. Shout out to my loving and awesome girlfriend, Ashley, uh, who uh, says the the topic of the week should be shutting up so you can watch the Dragon Show because episode three of House of the Dragon is on and she wants to watch it. So, uh, uh, yeah, I love you, hon. Another, another fun day at the uh, uh, Renaissance Fair with our uh, one of my friends, Dylan, came with us. So uh, shout out to Dylan as well. So um, shout out to Juno, who's being very loud about not getting a shout out. Yeah, I'll see you there, honey. Um, yeah, but uh, that is going to be the end of my shouts. I love you, Ashley. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you make sure Ashley's last. <laughs> Judo, because like, no, I'm going to be... Tricky. I, this isn't my... I didn't fall off the... No, but Ju- Ju- Judo argues that I'm going to be last this time. Ha, 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 ha. Shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to the guys uh, for showing up and recording. Shout out to the goddess. Shout out to Sweet Mama D, who's over there uh, playing Roblox, I think. Maybe I don't know. She's ignoring me. Uh, she's in, in the t- she's got the teenage blues right now. Kids are good at that. Oh, see now she's yelling. Uh, shout out to Black Chaos Roberto Roboto. Roboto. Ro- I I corrected myself. Uh, and and V who what's also that, hold on. It. What's that name again, Tricky? Roboto. Domo Arigato, Mister Roboto. I'm not going there. Uh, also, shout out to Roboto for uh, making all our thumbnails. Um, I'm sorry that I keep mispronouncing your name, but you know it's out of love. Uh, you're not mispronouncing his name. You're just missaying it. I'm mispronouncing. That's the same thing. And anyway, listen. And shout out no, to not. shout out to uh, Bentley, Murray, and Sly, the uh, the best Steven trio on PlayStation. Cooper Gang. Uh, Life. If there's nothing else, until next week, happy trophy hunting. See ya. Later.